Thank you, Tracy. And thank you so much for joining us today here in our beautiful Colorado auditorium, as well as wherever you're joining us from around the world. We want to just say welcome to you again. We're so grateful for this opportunity to live stream our healing school each week. It's one of the most watched events coming from our ministry, and we are so grateful that this good news is getting out, that God wants you well and has given us a better way to live. And so thank God for his faithfulness to his word and to us personally. Amen? Well, today it is my honor to introduce to you Barry Bennett, who uh, has been serving the Lord since 1972. He and his beautiful wife, Betty Kay, and their really great family uh, went into mission work, and they served in Chile and in Mexico and uh, established after coming back for, I think, around 12 years on the mission field, established a, a Spanish-speaking Bible college in the Dallas area. And he was the director of that school for five years before coming here to Colorado. And uh, he's been with the ministry now since 2007. Is that right, Barry? Wow. And uh, he is one of our favorite instructors and, and uh, has a lot of classes that he teaches. He used to be the dean of students, and uh, God promoted him after being in the phone center and answering the really hard questions that got sent in and eventually turned that into a book. And so he is an author multiple times now, as well as a conference, a sought-after conference speaker. But uh, God promoted him to the dean of instructors, and so... Uh, it is just such an honor, Barry, to have you with us today in the Healing School and to have you back. We love you, and we are so excited that you're here today. Let's give a big Healing School welcome to Barry Bennett as he comes today. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you're a little bit out of date, Daniel. I uh, got promoted out of Dean of Instructors into Senior Instructor. Uh -huh. What happened is each job they gave me, I didn't do very well, so they just kept, <laughs> just kept promoting me until I, I don't have a job. So. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, praise God, I'm blessed to be here. This is a thrill for me. Uh, you have no idea. <laughs> I told... Uh, one group, a church I preached at a couple months ago that uh, I am so happy to be here, I'm happy to be anywhere. Because uh, I almost was somewhere else. And yeah. uh, uh, so it's a thrill for me to be here and I appreciate all of you coming, all of you watching. I know I have a lot of friends that are watching as well. So blessings to all of you. I do want to give away the, these books because each time I write a book, I have a crisis and I can't promote it at the, at the conference I'm supposed to be at. And so I've missed, I missed uh, healing this year last year uh, for what I'm gonna share with you today, what was going, I was going on in my life. And I didn't get to promote my healing book. And then this year I was, my, book, my new book came out on, uh, what's, what's it called? Shaping Your Future. <laughs> Shaping Your Future. And I was gonna promote it at, the, at this healing conference and I had another issue and I couldn't be here. And so I'm just sick and tired of this. Uh, I'm going to uh, promote my books now, amen? All right, so this one's been out for a little over a year. He healed them all. This is the one where last year when I was going through my healing journey uh, and I was going through some times of discouragement, my wife, uh, Betty Kay, said, Barry, you need to read your book. And I said, I wrote the book. And she said, no, but you need to read it. And I said, honey, you don't understand. I wrote the book. And she says, but you're not doing it. Hmm. So I bought the book on, <laughs> on, on Kindle. <laughs> and I read it, and it blessed me so much. And so uh, I highly encourage you to read it. So then uh, this next book, Shaping Your Future, this has just come out, and it's about the power of seeds. It's about the seeds that we have within us. It's about the seed, Jesus Christ, and what he had within him. It's about a number of things. I do the gospel of cliches in here. 
I do the two trees, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of life. I, there are a lot of topics that are covered in here, but it's about where you encounter the grace of God. And the grace for infinite provision is in a seed. And the seed continues to provide and to provide and to provide if you have a vision to sow it. Amen. So the, I'm reading this book right now. <laughs> I, I bought it too. And, uh, and it's blessing me. And I thought, I didn't know I knew so much. This is good. So. <laughs> Praise God. So let me, let me share with you what I want to do today. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time, and, and what I'm going to share has gone through many changes over the months, uh, and you're probably catching me at a good time when I can be gracious and polite, because I've gone through some seasons where I wasn't in a good mood, and I had this message prepared in a different way. So, <laughs> uh, so you're going to get the good version. But uh, what I want to do, I want to tell my story a little bit. I don't want to go into a lengthy detail of it, but I want to share a little bit of what went on in my life. And then I want to answer a few questions that you may have, that I have or had, and uh, hopefully, you know, maybe we can get some, some light on that. And then I want to share with you seven things that I've learned in the past year, past 15 months, and uh, talk about different things that ha I have become aware of and things that I became aware of, things that I've learned as I've gone through this journey. Uh, the best part about the journey is I'm here. Amen? And so God is extremely good. I want to start in Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5. Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5. I'm in the New King James, and it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Anybody ever get forgetful? Who forgives all your iniquities. Very powerful statement. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Let me say that those two things go together. Jesus said to the paralytic, my son, thy sins are forgiven, which then allowed healing to take place. Everybody Jesus healed was forgiven first. If you're forgiven, you can be healed. Amen. Okay, I'm going to probably talk about that more as we go. Who heals all your disease, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Praise God. I, the first thing and the major thing I want to impart today is just a revelation of the goodness of God. A revelation of the goodness of God. Who crowns you with tender mercies. Who renews your youth like the eagle. Recently, my six-year-old granddaughter, she noticed that my hair is darker now. I uh, came back in darker, and for which uh, is the only good thing about this whole story. <laughs> Andrew, asked, Andrew came up to me and he says, I wish my hair would grow darker. And I said, well, I can tell you how, but you're not going to like it. <laughs> no. But uh, it did come in a little darker, and I'm uh, thrilled with that. I look more like uh, what it was in my 40s, probably. And my granddaughter, who's six years old, came up to me. She says, Granddad, you don't look a day over 30. <laughs> that girl can see she can see. So that blessed me. Praise the Lord. But the goodness of God uh, is the foundation of how I made it through this, this journey. Just understanding how much he loved me. I had a revelation about three years ago, uh, and it was brief, and I can't make more of it than it was, but I had about th a three-second revelation of heaven. And I had been studying heaven. I'd been looking up all the verses about eternal life and what happens. And, and so I was very much focused on that. And as I was uh, watching a TV show, I, uh, for, of all things, I got this flash of a revelation that just was about three seconds long. And what I saw was a place of absolute peace, absolute joy, absolute provision, no need no fear of ever having a need, no worry. Everything was just 
the best. It was, it was the peace of God. And that really changed me because I saw where I'm going. I saw where you're going. And it was, it was life-changing to have that, that revelation of no anxiety, no fear, no worry, no stress, no anything, just the peace of God, the love of God, the blessing of God, the provision of God. And I said, oh, Lord, that's what I want. And God said, Barry, you can have that now. You can have that now. And I thought about it and I thought, you know what? You're right. All the promises of God are destined or are focused on us walking in the peace of God right now. Go to Romans 5.1. Romans 5.1. If you can put it on the screen for me. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. Do you know what that means? Do you know what it means to have absolute peace with God? And what it means to me is really in the sense of peace with God, from peace I have found comes faith. I struggle with faith if I don't have peace. But when I'm in a place of peace, peace with my identity, peace with who I am, peace with who God is, peace with his, his heart for me, from that peace, it's very easy to believe God. It's very easy to have faith. And that's a, that's a lot of my story is the peace that has accompanied me through these many months. Uh, hopefully I can transmit that to you in some way as we go through this. So let me tell you a little bit about what happened to me. Some of you have heard this and some of you perhaps have not. But uh, back in March of 2020, I started not feeling well, which I have gone through periods in my life where I haven't felt well. And like many of you, I just keep going. I just press on and I believe God and I just keep going and, and whatever it is disappears and, I, and I'm fine. And I wasn't feeling well and this was persisting for a while and I thought, well, maybe this was the beginning of COVID and I thought maybe I have COVID. I had a couple of the symptoms. I didn't know if I had COVID or not and testing was not as abundant as it is now. And so I just was going through whatever I was going through uh, and quarantine began, so we're not coming to work. So I'm not really having to test myself stamina wise or strength wise, I'm just at home. And it didn't go away. And then one day I started having a symptom that I won't describe, but a symptom that I thought, well, I can't really overlook this. This is, this is more serious. And so on May 11th, Monday, May 11th, I went to our uh, family physician, Dr. Matthew Young, if you're looking for a physician, and his wife, Christy, who is a, what, what do they call, nurse practitioner, she saw me, and they, uh, she, she did a uh, you know, question and answer and all symptoms and checked me out and all of this, and at the very end of the thing, they took blood. And so that was on a Monday, and on a Thursday, I came to school and did a live stream of, um, what, was the, what were we doing, uh, campus days. Yeah live stream of campus days. And I noticed in the morning I was starting to turn yellow. And I thought, hmm, that's different. And uh, I, I didn't pay that much attention to it. I was, I'm always focused on the next message and what I'm gonna share that day. And I should have paid attention because I had hepatitis in 1989. And God healed me from that. And I just, I saw the yellow and I, I just didn't think about it that much. And I came to school and I ministered uh, the live stream in the main auditorium. Uh, gave a good word, it's on YouTube. <laughs> you can see me two days before I was supposed to die, as I found out. And uh, I went and had lunch with Andrew in the green room. We talked about healing. And I had no idea, as I found out the next day, that I was dying. Uh, so, <laughs> The next day, Friday, I get a phone call from Christy, the nurse practitioner, and she said, Barry, whatever you're doing, stop what you're doing. You've got to go to the emergency room. And I said, why? She said, well, your uh, pancreas levels, blood levels or whatever, and your liver blood levels, they're off the charts. You've got to go right now. So we picked an emergency room and they called ahead and got things prepared. And so we went into the emergency room and they rolled me away. And off I go for all these tests and x-rays, and I forget if I had a scan or not, I don't know, but I had a number of things done to me. And I was immediately admitted into the hospital, and the admitting doctor came in, 
And he looked at my results and my x-ray and whatever else had been done. And he walked over and he said, Mr. Bennett, he said, I don't know if you're a man that He said, I don't know if you're a man that makes plans, but you need to make some. He said, you need to get your affairs in order. And he said, one of the doctors, I, there were several nurses and what have you, but one of them said, if you hadn't come in today, if you had waited till Monday, you wouldn't be alive on Monday. I said, no, I was preaching yesterday. <laughs> and so this was... What, what they saw was a large, and later I discovered from the GI doctor that did camera tours of my inner man, uh, <laughs> he discovered a tumor the size of a softball wrapped around my pancreas. It had shut down my pancreas, shut down my liver. I was being poisoned to death with bile. That's why I was turning yellow. And I wouldn't have made it through the weekend, they say, if I hadn't come in. And I was, and the, the immediate uh, thought of the various doctors that came was that I had pancreatic cancer. That was what I lived with for the next five days until the biopsy came back and it was discovered it was non-Hodgkin lymphoma, so the doctors were thrilled. <laughs> no, you have non-Hodgkin lymphoma. There's a chance that we can, we can save you. But the tumor was so large that uh, it had shut down the pancreas, shut down the liver, so they had to put a tube in my side and I had to drain bile through a to a bag. Had to do that for 10 days and that was, anyway, not nice. Uh, the tumor was ulcerated, it was bleeding. I was bleeding internally. It was threatening to perforate my intestines. And so there was a lot of stuff going on in which as time went by, I realized the doctors really didn't think I was gonna make it. And so that was the beginning of my journey. To say that I was stunned would be an understatement. Yeah. To say that I was shocked, surprised, I mean, it, I cannot describe to you how shocking this was to me because I have walked in health, yeah. except for a couple bumps in the road like anyone would have, but I have walked in health my entire life. I don't think about being sick. I don't believe in being sick. I don't talk about being sick. I've never thought about having cancer. It wasn't, on, it wasn't the last thing on my list. It wasn't on my list. I don't think that way. I don't live that way. I'm in the Word all the time. I teach in a Bible college, you know, on and on I could go. I simply was stunned. I did not know where this came from. And to be preaching one day and told I was about to die the next day was double stunning. It was really something. And so I had to deal with the shock of it, and I probably, it probably took me three weeks to even get oriented to what was going on. My condition was so serious that it was, it was almost like I had been in a car accident. Basically, they had, the doctors were taking over, and I was immediately, the tube was put, put in, and then they began chemo. And I'm sure I signed some stuff. And, but here's what happened. Th this is the key thing. When I was told that I needed to get my affairs in order, which we went ahead and did just out of wisdom, uh, we had never had a will or anything like that. So we went ahead and did that the following week. But uh, get your affairs in order. And the Lord spoke to me in that moment and said, Barry, you're not going to die. You're going to make it through this. Amen. And that... <laughs> that was the word I got. Now, at other times in my life, I've told other stories of miracle situations and where the Lord spoke to me. Uh, I was in a doctor's, I was, I was ready for surgery, basically, for a giant kidney stone that I was told was not going to pass, naturally. And the doctor that was going to do it was on his way from one hospital to where I was. And the Spirit of God just rose up in me and, and no. And I said, please unhook me and undo me and let me get dressed and I'm, I'm leaving. Uh, and I did, and that was a $7,000 charge. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I just felt the Spirit of God say, no, not to do this, this procedure. And I passed the kidney stone that would not pass. I passed it two days later with no pain. And so that was the Lord. In another situation, I, had, I was diagnosed with skin cancer in my ear on, in, inside the 
cone of my ear. And the doctor told me that we're going to have to do surgery on this, but it's such a surgery that afterwards you will need plastic surgery to get it fixed. And the Spirit of God rose up inside of me and said, no, you don't need this. And so I didn't follow through on that. And my ear healed. It took one year exactly, but almost to the day, one year for it to be completely, totally healed with no treatment whatsoever. And it's healed today. That's been like three or four years now. So I know what it is to get a word from God to not follow medical advice. In this case, what I got from God was, Barry, you're not going to die. You'll make it through this. Now, I didn't know what this meant. And that was a long process. And so that, that's some of you know, what took place with me is that I went through numerous chemos. Uh, the tumor disappeared completely. There's no tumor. Then, uh, but lymphoma kept showing up on scans, little spots of lymphoma. So I went through more chemos and it still kept showing up. So I went through something called a T-cell transplant, CAR T-cell transplant. It's something relatively new. And uh, it was where they take the T-cell, they take all my blood out of my body and run it through a machine. And it's, it's really cool. So, <laughs> uh, and they take the T-cells, whatever those are, and they put them in a container, a special container, and then they put them in a freezer and they ship them to California. And in California, they re-engineer them and they ship them back and three weeks later, they put them back into me and they're like little scrubbing bubbles now. And they go through my blood and they eat up all the cancer. It's amazing what they're doing nowadays. And I was concerned that they were doing this in California And I thought, dear Lord, I don't want to be a transgender Democrat. You know? <laughs> but, uh, so far, so good. Mm -hmm. But during, during the first, before that happened, during the, this whole process, I did become a very emotional guy. I got really emotional. Some of it was probably due to the, the drugs I was taking. And I just became emotional about everything. And uh, one day I was sitting at the, at the dining room table and I looked out the window and I saw the mountains in the, different, in the distance and I just started crying. And, and then I cleared up and, and Betty Kay was sitting next to me and I turned to her and I, I started crying again. <laughs> and then I dried up and I looked across the kitchen at our new coffee maker. <laughs> And I started crying again. <laughs> so I, I've changed. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> praise God. So anyway, I went through this T-cell thing, and uh, I've had a couple of PET scans since then. The last one I had just a couple of weeks ago. I was at the doctor's this past Tuesday. Good report. Great report. So some of the, I, I want to answer or try to answer a few questions because I know people have questions. I have questions. You have no idea how many questions I have about this because this was totally unexpected to me. It's not part of my theology or my belief system or anything. And so the first question would be, Barry, why did you get sick? Why did you get sick? And my answer is, I have no idea. Okay. But we live in a fallen world. We live in fallen bodies and we live in a fallen world. And... There are environmental issues that we have all around us every day. And I've identified two of them, and we just found out a week or two ago from our water supplier uh, in this community where we live that for the past year, the radium in the water has been too high and drinking too much radium over time, you can get non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Yeah. Wow. All right, so I don't think that's where this came from, but there's, a, there's an issue there that in our environment, we have these kinds of things taking place. Using Roundup, I use Roundup on the yard for the past 10 years, uh, about four times a summer, spraying weeds. Roundup causes non-Hodgkin lymphoma. I did not know that at the time. And so there are environmental things that go on that we are exposed to, not to mention the air and the food we eat has been all genetically altered. And so there's all kinds of things that are possible as to why a sickness uh, pops up. 
I tell people, even in the nicest yards, there are occasionally a weed, right? <laughs> and so sometimes even in the, in the best of, of lives, a sickness can come. And I've, I've looked at people that have been uh, cancer patients and they cover the spectrum. There are people that live very carnal, worldly lives that never get sick. And there are people like me that get cancer. And there are many examples on both sides of that issue. So it's not just the devil. I th you know, people say, well, it's just the devil. Well, it may, it may have gotten to be involved with the devil at some point, but if the devil could make us sick and kill us, he would have done it a long time ago. So the devil has to have an opening. And if, a genetic, if it's a genetic predisposition that I had toward this, I don't know. My family does not have a history of cancer. They studied every organ in my body. Everything is pristine. The only thing I have is this non-Hodgkin lymphoma. I, it's, it's just the strangest thing. And so where did it come from? I can't give you that answer. I don't know. Well, Barry, you must have been sinning. Uh, <laughs> You know, perhaps, I don't know, but he forgives all my iniquities and heals all my diseases. Amen. And so even if I were sinning, which I'm not aware of other than I don't even have a dog to kick. So anyway, <laughs> I don't think that's the issue. I just think it was, why did, why did Paul tell Timothy to take a little wine for his stomach's sake? Why? It was a natural thing with a natural remedy. All right, so I, I, I can't give you a good answer. Uh, it wasn't God that made me sick, I know that. And I'm, if, if God wanted me dead, I wouldn't be here. So, you know, that's the best I can do for that one. So the next question is, Barry, why did you have chemo? Uh, it all happened so fast that I didn't even, I, I didn't have time to pray. I just had a word from God that I was gonna make it through this. And I was near death. It was a near death experience in the sense that I only had a short amount of time without assistance. And so I just felt like, yeah, go, go for it. Do what you gotta do, because God's already given me a word. And so I never feared chemo. I never feared the side effects that supposedly can happen with chemo. And what I've heard from a lot of Christians, I would never take chemo, I just wouldn't do that. And what it is, it's not so much faith for healing as fear of chemo. Sometimes we get our faith and our fear mixed up. Yeah. Same thing's happening today with the vaccine. Oh boy, I'm gonna get in trouble here. Uh, it's not faith for health that many people have, it's fear of vaccine. So don't get confused on what you're believing. You may have uh, faith for healing and, and not need the vaccine, praise God. Other people may want to take the vaccine because that's where their faith is. Praise God. Praise God. It's just, it's not a theological issue, folks. It's, not. it's your personal faith. Amen. Amen. Yep. All right. So if you don't like me for that, I'm sorry. Uh, oh man, I could do another five minutes there, but I'm not going to do that. So anyway, why did I use chemo? Uh, it was there. I believed what God told me. I would make it through this. Side effects, I have had not any except uh, my fingerprints. I've kind of lost them. I assume they're gonna come back. My hair came in darker and, uh, and I'm better looking. So, <laughs> it's, just, it's just where, it's where your faith is. And I'm not going to live by fear and other, those other times I mentioned where God said, no, don't do this, I got up and left. I didn't do it because that was the word I had from God. If I went through the same things again and the Lord said, be at peace, do this, I'll do it. Whatever it takes to stay alive. Whatever it takes to stay alive. Amen. Uh, did I ever get discouraged? Oh, yeah. Uh, Audrey Mack called the other day and was talking with her and she was praying about discouragement and all of that. And I said, Audrey, I've probably had 500 opportunities to be discouraged. And I probably took about 400 of them. Yes, I've been discouraged. Yes, I didn't know why this was happening. Yes, I went through days of cranky. You can talk to my wife. <laughs> I, I went through all of that. I know how to get discouraged and I know how to get undiscouraged. And so every time I would get discouraged, I, would, I could pop out of it. But yeah, I went through discouragement. I went through days where I just wasn't happy at all because it took so long. 
uh, to get over this. Did I ever doubt? Probably I, I went through times of doubt. I'm, I'm not trying to make myself a hero here. I'm not a hero. I just had a word from God and I was willing to rest in the peace that he gave me and go through the system and go through the process and come out healed. So it's not that I heroically jumped up and fought demons and waved my arms and you know, jumped around and ran through the house. and I didn't do that kind of thing. There was one point where I was in bed and was feeling very discouraged and very down and I didn't, I didn't even have this oomph to fight. Didn't even want to fight, I couldn't fight. I just was out of it. And the Lord said to me, Barry, he says, you can stay here in bed and I still love you. And you're still gonna come through this. And you have no idea how much that blessed me because I realized that I felt like I needed to be doing something. And then what I saw from what he said to me is that, wait a minute, Jesus already did it. I don't know if you're catching this, but sometimes when we're sick, we feel like we need to be doing something and we begin to get all worked up and jump around and yell and scream. And there might be a time for that, but he's already done it. And that's why when I was talking about peace and talking about that revelation of heaven, I had his peace through the whole thing. Even when I was discouraged, even when I went through those, those bad times, I had peace. I know I'm going to make it. And so I don't have to to jump up and down and wave my arms and yell at the devil, I know I'm going to make it. I have peace with God. And that peace was the foundation for my faith. Is anyone getting this? It's deeper than you think. All right, having peace with God is the only way you can walk in faith because otherwise your faith is going to be you trying to do something to get God to do something. And it's already been done. Yes. And I learned that when I was lying in bed that day and the Lord spoke to me, Barry, you can just stay here and I still love you and you're still gonna make it through this. Yes. And I thought, you mean I don't have to jump up and down? And <laughs> it was amazing to me how the word of God can just settle you, transform you and carry you through even when you don't have the strength to do anything. And I thought, you know, I've spent years believing God and quoting the promises and confessing and proclaiming and I've done all of that and now I don't have the physical wherewithal to do any of that. And I said, I said Lord, I hope all of that other counts because <laughs> now I can't do it. And it, it didn't matter. He's already done it. And all I had to do was rest in the word that he gave me. You're going to make it through this. I wish he had given me a little bit different word you're going to make it through this in one week. That would have been awesome. Took, took 12 months, but I made it through it because God doesn't lie. Amen? All right. So what I want to do now is give you seven things that I learned in this journey. And I'm not going to take all day, so don't get discouraged, okay? First thing, start at the finish line. Start at the finish line. This is something I was able to do and I'm always able to do if I'm ever in a, have a bump in the road in my health. By his stripes, you were healed. You are healed, start there. You are not the sick trying to get well. You are the well resisting sickness. You need to start there. You need to see yourself healed. You need to see this as a completed work and somebody's trying to steal it. But you are healed. Start at the finish line. Don't say, how can I get healed? You are healed. I was healed. I knew I was healed. I went through a process to realize that physically, but I already knew it spiritually. This is so key, is that so many people are trying to get well. You say, well, Barry, you took chemo trying to get well. No, I was well, but the chemo was a process in which wellness was realized physically. Mm -hmm. But in my spirit, in my inner deepest self, I, I am healed. 
by his stripes I am healed. God desires long life for all of us. Again, I say, I could easily not be here today. Many people that, many have died prematurely because, and I'll talk about this more in a second, because they refused to go to the doctor and now they're not here. I went to the doctor and I'm here. Okay? He wants us to live a long life. If God didn't want me here, I wouldn't be here. Amen. People have car accidents that shouldn't have had car accidents and they're no, no longer here. People have other kind of accidents or things happen and they're no longer here, but God wanted them here. Yeah. We live in a fallen world, folks. Things happen. Yeah. That's right. And so we need to understand that the healing has already taken place. By his stripes, we were healed. Jesus healed, I have, this I probably should turn into a message, I don't, and I'll, I'll do real quick. Jesus healed in different ways, and I hadn't really noticed this before. But in Matthew 14, 14, it says, and he saw the multitudes and had compassion on them and healed their sick. Or Jesus was motivated by compassion and healed them, and it doesn't say they were in great faith. It doesn't say anything about their faith, they were just, the multitudes were following him. And he had compassion and he healed their sick. I'm going to talk more about that in a few minutes. So that was one way he healed. Some came to hear him and he healed them. They came to hear him and be healed. Luke 5, 15. That's a different kind of scenario. They came to listen and the word brought forth faith and he healed them as, as, they, as, they, hear, as they heard him. Okay. Another scenario is they pressed in to touch him. As many as touched him got healed. So there's a different, there's a proactiveness in that one. And that's in Mark 3.10. So they pressed in to touch him, but the, the first group, he just had compassion on them. And so what I'm noticing is that Jesus is all about healing, regardless many times of how we approach him. And then we have the, the, the cases of exceptional faith, the centurion, the woman with the issue of blood, etc. And we spend a lot of time teaching those, but seldom do we teach about just the compassion for healing. Yeah, that's good. And so we, we need to understand that healing is your inheritance. And I needed, there were times in my journey where I was out of it, or I was in the hospital, or I was in bed at home, and I just needed compassion. Because the healing is already accomplished. But I just needed the compassion. And God would give me compassion. Other people would call and give me compassion. And, and so, number one, start at the finish line. By his stripes, you were healed. And he loves you so much that you can trust him and you can have peace. As I mentioned, Romans 5, 1, peace with God. And that is so key for faith to function. Do you have peace? Do you have peace? Number two, and I'm going to spend a few minutes on this one. Don't receive guilt and condemnation from others. Don't receive guilt and condemnation from others. One thing that I have learned, as people have written me, because I've been transparent with what I'm going through, and I was at the minister's conference in the fall and in my remission time before I relapsed, and I, I talked about this, so people have seen that video and other things that I've shared. And they write me and they say, Barry, thank you so much for being transparent. I have a something I'm dealing with, but I'm afraid to tell my pastor or I'm afraid to tell my church friends because I know what they're going to say. They're going to judge me for going to the doctor or they're going to judge me for being sick or what, they're just going to tell me to believe God. And I don't know what to do. And I've realized there's a whole subculture of Christianity that is sick and suffering and they're afraid, at least in the word of faith, grace, faith movement or whatever we are, there, there is a subculture of Christians that are afraid to tell anybody that they're suffering because they don't want the judgment, they don't want the condemnation, they don't want the guilt trip. And this really bothers me. I have had people write me judging me I can't believe you teach healing and you, you wouldn't use chemo. You know, well, thanks for the letter. As if, as if I wasn't going through enough already. But, but that's that attitude, that egotistical, prideful, accuser of the brethren attitude has got to stop. 
When we, when we find out that someone we know or love is suffering, it should never be about, why don't you just believe God? It should always be about, I'm going to stand with you through this. I am going to pray with you, pray for you, and tell me where your faith is. Tell me, do you need to go to the doctor? If you need to go, I'm with you. I will go with you. I will be with you. I will stand with you. I will not judge you. I will not condemn you. We need to, as the body of Christ, love each other and accept people's faith where it's at. Rather than judging them and telling them you shouldn't go to the doctor. You don't have faith if you go to the doctor. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. That's of the devil. It's time for that to stop, folks. We have got to encourage each other. We, the minute we hear someone is suffering, we have got to shift into a Luke 418 mindset that I have come to heal the sick and bind up the brokenhearted. And we need to have the compassion of the Lord, not the judgment of the enemy. Yes. Amen. Amen. There, you wouldn't believe how many, and there may be some in this room right now that feel guilty because you've gone to the doctor or someone is, is criticizing you because you've gone to the doctor. Don't, don't receive that. If you need to go to the doctor, go to the doctor. Doctors, all the doctors and nurses I have met in the last year have been awesome people. They are the best. They have been more caring, more, more concerned than many Christians. They've been top notch. One doctor, the GI doctor, the one that tours my inner man, <laughs> He, he told my wife when the tumor was gone, and it was a big tumor, and he's, it's gone, and he went to my wife after I'm in recovery, while I'm in recovery, and he said, I just want to thank you for letting me part, be part of this miracle. Wow. These people recognize God. Oh. There are, if I go over a little bit today, can, oh, is that all right? I've been waiting a year for this. <laughs> but there are people, and, and I love Smith Wigglesworth. I love John G. Lake. But folks, slow down on this stuff. Smith Wigglesworth said, no knife will ever touch my body. Good for you. But that immediately puts me as a second class Christian. And I'm not going to receive that. Knives have touched my body. I just had, I had a hernia in my stomach three weeks ago and had to have it fixed. I don't know where that, it was making my PET scan go nuts. And they thought I had cancer again. And it turned out to be a hernia. A knife touched my body. That doesn't make me second class to Smith Wigglesworth or anybody else. Okay, so don't, don't feel guilty if you're not measuring up. Let's quit measuring ourselves with ourselves. Amen. John G. Lake in the Black Plague and, and, and having germs in, under the microscope and every germ that touched him died. Praise God for that, John G. Lake. But there's a lot of little supposed John G. Lakes running around. COVID won't, if COVID touches my body, it will die, blah, blah, blah. And the next thing you know, they have COVID. And they feel condemned or other people judge. Please let's stop that. Let's stop the judging, let's stop the, the criticizing and the condemning, and let's start being the body of Christ. Amen. Loving one another, praying for one another, lifting each other up. Do whatever you have to do to stay alive. God has given you life, and it's supposed to be long. And it's interesting to me how if the Lord tells you to go to a foreign country as a missionary, you'll take an airplane. That didn't exist in Jesus' day. But you'll use technology. You'll use an iPhone. You'll use a computer. You'll use all the other technological stuff. But the minute you get sick, don't go to the doctor. Well, what, wait a minute. Do you put antiseptic on a cut? You just use medical uh, help. Do you go to the dentist? You just use medical help. Ladies, when you have a baby. All right. Are you, are you catching this? If you don't get anything else out of this today, 
Let's stop judging and let's start supporting people, praying for people, standing with people rather than criticizing them. Amen? When we teach healing, it should not be about not going to the doctor. That's not how you teach healing. There, it's, it's about a relationship with God. It's about hearing God. It's about doing what God tells you to do. If he tells you no, it's no. If he tells you you're going to live and make it through this, then have supernatural peace and, and live and make it through this. Okay. Number three, third thing I've learned. Follow your faith and peace. Follow your faith and peace. You can't follow someone else's faith. You can't walk out somebody else's talk. Whatever their testimony is and however they approach it and however they preach it, great. But you've got to follow your faith in peace. You can't walk in someone else's faith. There were times when I, I simply could not fight. I couldn't, I was shocked. I was surprised. I said, who am I? I can't even get a prayer out. I can't even get a help me Jesus out. I was just that gun. And a lot of it was just drug related. It was just, I was not myself. But I had peace the peace of God that I was going to make it through. And I've already talked about that, that I feel like we feel we have to generate something in order to receive what's already been done when truly what we need to do is trust him and believe that his healing has been accomplished on the cross, that by his stripes we were healed and by faith and peace we can receive healing. And it may be instantaneous or it may be a process. Okay, I've kind of covered some of these things already. So number three, follow your faith in peace. Number four, this is a big one. I taught on this in July. July 15th, go look at July 15th Healing School, and I taught on standing in the gap. And I amplify this subject, but let me mention it here. Find others who will truly stand with you. I'm not talking about our thoughts and prayers are with you. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about prayer people of prayer and faith who love you and who will stand with you, find them. If you have people, all they do is criticize and judge, get rid of those people in your life and find some real friends, okay? Find some people that will stand with you. If you have to get rid of your family, get a new family, whatever you gotta do. You don't need negativity around you. Find people that will stand with you. I had so many standing with me and I don't mean just Oh, Barry, we love you. I don't mean that. I mean, they were praying for me. What's the word? Fervently. Yeah. <laughs> the effectual fervent prayer. They were standing with me. And if I begin to name names, it's going to take 30 minutes. But I mean, we have some here in the front row. We have people in the, in the building and in, on the staff, people in other states, people in other countries that were standing with me, that were in contact with me, that were praying for me. Greg and Janice, Greg, are you still here? Greg and Janice came to our house. They prayed with us, prayed for me. Pastor Lawson came, prayed for me. And then I got quarantined. <laughs> quarantined. Yeah. Then I didn't see anybody for a year. But uh, others called, others wrote, and I knew I was being supported. And even in my darkest days, I knew people were standing with me. Yeah. And then I'd get the occasional email. I can't believe you went to the doctor. <laughs> Delete and ban. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I don't need those people. Right. All right? And I don't even have time to fight with them anymore. I have come to such a place of peace that if you're gonna argue with me, goodbye. I'm not gonna do it. I am not gonna get into strife. I am not gonna argue. I am not gonna debate. I'm just not gonna do it. That was the old Barry. This is the new one. And I'm in peace. Amen. 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 All right. Praise God. So find others who will truly stand with you. The centurion stood for the healing of his servant. The servant wasn't involved. You can stand and, have, and bring healing to someone with, with them being out of it, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. 
the four that carried the paralytic on the, on the pallet and went, dug a hole in the roof, it says, and Jesus saw their faith. Their faith. Now, I include the paralytic in this, having faith to be let down on a pallet through a hole. But he used the plural, their faith. They caused this miracle to happen. The Syrophoenician woman, on behalf of her daughter, the daughter was demon-possessed. She wasn't part of this healing. The woman went to Jesus, and her faith got someone else healed. Your faith can get your friends and family healed. If you will stand, rather than just say, my thoughts and prayers are with you, but if you will really become an effectual, fervent intercessor, we can bring healing to each other. Folks, healing is in the body of Christ. And so many of us aren't getting healed because we're waiting for the platform to do it. So whoever's on the platform, they should do it. And it might be the person sitting next to you that has the gift of healing. If we would start loving each other rather than judging each other and we would begin to pray effectually for each other, we would find a lot more healing taking place. Listen. Okay, I'm going to shake your tree here. Everybody in Acts chapter 5, everybody that went to the first church, Jesus is gone. Everybody that went to the first church in Jerusalem got healed. Amen. Acts chapter 5, verses 13, 14, I don't know, somewhere in there. Everybody that went to that church got healed. In James chapter 5, it says, Is any among you sick? Let them call for the elders of the church in the prayer of faith will save the sick. And it says, pray one for another that you might be healed. We are supposed to get healed in church. That's right. Therefore, if someone goes to your church who is sick and they ask for prayer and it's kind of an afterthought in your church and they don't get healed and then they go to the doctor, you have no right to criticize them. You had your chance. Are you catching me? The church should be healing the sick. And so if they come to your church and don't get healed and they go to the doctor, zip it. Amen. 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 All right. So find others, number four, who will truly stand with you. I'll be done here in just a few minutes. Number five, prepare for the future. This was huge for me. As I'm lying there unable to do anything, my wife is serving me hand to foot, doing everything for me. I'm making plans for the future. I'm seeing the future. I'm seeing this. I saw a summer family Bible conference. I saw other things. I didn't get to have Christmas last year with my grandkids. I, didn't, we, I was completely quarantined. I see a blowout Christmas coming. <laughs> I bought clothes that I couldn't wear online. I just, I want that. I'm going to wear it. <laughs> Someday I'm going to wear, I'm going to wear those shoes. I'm going to wear that shirt. I would do, I would prepare for the future. I would plan for the future. I would buy other things I couldn't use until I got well. And that would inspire me. I've got to get well because I want to use this. <laughs> Prepare for the future. Set goals for the future. Don't live in the present. Don't wallow in the mire of what you're going through. Look toward the future. You have a future. By his stripes, you were healed. Get excited about the future. Set goals. A good man out of the, Matthew 12, 35, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. Start bringing forth your future. That's what this, this book is about, shaping your future. It'll bless you. But you can shape your future. You can change your future even from a hospital bed. Yes. Praise God. Yes. And so begin to set goals. Begin to look ahead. Number six, be thankful for every little thing. Be thankful. Yes. Be thankful you have a roof over your head. Be thankful you have food to eat. Be thankful. Just find things to be thankful for. But what that does, it keeps an attitude, a positive attitude of praise and thanksgiving to God. It keeps your heart fresh. Being thankful when you say, oh, God, why did this happen to me? Oh, God, whatever. you may get discouraged. I got discouraged, but get undiscouraged yeah. and start giving thanks. Amen. 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 And I have so much to be thankful for. And you do, too. And so I would do that just to keep my attitude fresh and alive. And I'd be setting goals for the future. And I had people standing with me. All seven of these things were active. And that's why I'm here. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Lance. 
Number seven, last one. Having done all, stand. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. I don't care how long the road is. And I, my journey was, was uh, one year. Others I've, I hear that write me years of going through this stuff, whether it's cancer or whether it's something else. My heart goes out. I have such a compassion for the afflicted right now. You have no idea because I... I understand. And it grieves me to the depths of my being that the church doesn't care more for those in their midst that are suffering. And we hear their story, yeah, I'm going to the doctor, yeah, I'm suffering with this. Well, I'm gonna pray for you, brother. No, that's not enough. Where's the love of God? We have got to get in there and begin to heal people with the love of God that we say we have in us. Amen? So that's a little bit of my journey. Uh, as I said, I got a great report the other day and I expect to be here a long, long time. Amen. Amen. I appreciate you paying attention for all this time. I know this might have been kind of long, but I want to pray with you and pray for you. Amen. I just believe there's something in this room right now. Maybe some chains are falling off, eyes are opening, hearts are opening. And I want to pray, and I just want to believe God that either you are going to get healed or you're going to, I mean, by his stripes we were, you understand. But the, the manifestation will take place or maybe you're one of the ones that mm, may have been a critic or a judge. God still loves you and I'm trying to, okay? <laughs> but maybe some of those barriers and chains can come off today. And the love of God that you say lives in you can begin to embrace people that are suffering, even though they may not be walking at your supposed level of faith. Okay. So why don't, if you'd like, why don't we stand? Hallelujah. Father, first and foremost in my heart is to pray that everyone in this room and everyone watching has peace with you. Can enter into that dimension of peace, of rest, knowing that it is finished. And that you love us with an unconditional love. We're not trying to earn anything. We're trying to learn how to walk in what we already have. Father, I pray for those right now that are suffering, perhaps suffering and afraid to tell anyone, afraid of the guilt trip or whatever might come their way. Father, I pray for them to be free to be free to go get whatever attention they need, whether it be medical or spiritual, to be free to share and find people to share with that will stand with them, to not receive the guilt. I pray that all guilt and condemnation would, would flee in the name of Jesus from the hearts of those that have been suffering and been receiving criticism for their so-called lack of faith. Father, I just speak the peace of God into the hearts of those that don't know what to do. Should I go to the doctor? Should I not go to the doctor? I just speak the peace of God that they should know that they know that they know that you want them to live long, a prosperous life. And whatever it takes, any healing is a good healing. Praise God.
any in this room or that are watching that are suffering from some kind of cancer. Father, we, don't, we can't say for sure where it comes from. There are many ideas, but it's not from you. And you paid for it on the cross. And so, Father, we take our peace and we take our faith and we speak to cancer now in the name of Jesus. And we say, die. Die. We curse you in Jesus' name. And we receive the recreative power of God. to heal, to deliver, to restore. Oh, Father, I pray our hearts would be touched and we would understand the suffering that so many are going through. And not just say, thank God that's not me, but rather that we would stand in the gap and pray and bring healing to those that are suffering. Father, I pray for those that perhaps have been the critics, the judges, that their hearts would be softened to see that they're not ministering for Jesus with those kinds of words and thoughts. That we need to love the afflicted, regardless of their level of faith, regardless of where they're at, regardless of their fears, regardless of all. We need to love them and support them and pray with them and encourage them in whatever direction their faith leads them. We are the body of Christ. And Lord, I pray we would see ourselves as the body of Christ and that your gifts are in the body, gifts of miracles, gifts of faith, gifts of healing. It doesn't just come from the platform. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah. Father, I speak your blessing and your revelation. People would have revelation today over everybody here, everybody watching. In the powerful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this word. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Barry, thank you so much. So good to have you back. And it's so good to hear and receive that word today. That was amazing. And I know it's going to be watched multiple times and listened to multiple times by a lot of people. So, you know what's interesting about this whole doctor thing? There's this guy named Luke <laughs> who wrote one of the Gospels and wrote the entire book of Acts. Isn't that something? Right? So, I'm telling you, God wants us well. Hallelujah. And thank God for the Word of God. Thank God for out of this experience, Barry, that uh, the Lord has given you such wisdom to be able to move us forward as the body of Christ. We truly love and appreciate you. Amen. I'd like to invite our prayer ministers, if you would come at this time and get into place. And for those of you who would like personal ministry uh, in whatever way, uh, we certainly are here for that. We don't just teach at the healing school and, and preach, but we put into application what we believe. And so thank you again for being a part of our healing school. I want to also remind you, if you're not aware of Barry Bennett's uh, webpage, you can go to barrybennett.org. Is that right, Barry? Uh, barrybennett.org. And Barry has a lot of resource on that webpage that will really be a blessing to you. So I want to remind you of that. And then again, we will be here, um, let's see, next Thursday, Tracy, uh, is the Identity Conference, the Destiny Conference, and we will not be here next Thursday. 
Right. It'll be live stream only. I just want to make sure that uh, I, I get that out there. Uh, and then, of course, we'll be back the following week. But because of the Destiny Conference, it'll be happening right here uh, in, our, in our space. So that's why we will not be here for Healing School, but we'll be here for the conference. So again, I want to just thank you for being a part of our Healing School today. I bless you and I release you now in Jesus' name. Those of you who want ministry, uh, come on and let our prayer ministers minister to you. And again, thank you so much. We love you and look forward to being with you again next time. God bless you.